when we think about molecules and we think about life, we generally think of them in the following way. So one can have molecules and if you put, say for example, carbon atoms in a particular arrangement, then you can get a particularly interesting molecule like sucrose, sugar. If we put these molecules in a different arrangement, then we can get something perhaps more interesting like DNA, the molecule that encodes our genetic information. It turns out that nature, for reasons that are not understood at all, has chosen a particular handedness. That is, I can arrange molecules in a particular order, and the distance between the molecules can be exactly the same, the bonds can be exactly the same, except that one molecule can be left-handed, and the other version of that molecule can be right-handed. It's possible you can think, when you think of a screw, a screw has a certain chirality, is what it's called. It goes in a certain direction. We could also have the threads of the screw go in the opposite direction. Okay? We choose a particular direction for a screw, okay? and nature has chosen a particular direction for molecules. This is what's called the homochirality of life. All DNA is one-handedness, all sugars are another-handedness. It's thought, it's speculated, I would say, that the reason that this came about has something to do with particle physics, the, the handedness, the deep, deep issue of handedness in particles. It's probably not the case, in my opinion. I think it's probably just simply random chance that life started with one particular handedness might think, well, what impact does this handedness have, this chirality have on, uh, on molecules or life today? And it actually has a pretty profound impact. I'll start off with something that's simple to describe, which is something we all understand, which is flavors. So it turns out that two molecules, which are exactly the same, except one is twisted left and one is twisted right, taste very different. So there's one molecule which is called spearmint. This is something that goes in gum. It's a, a, a green leaf that's often used in cooking. And there's another flavor called caraway seed. Now caraway seed oil and spearmint are the exact same molecule except one is twisted left and one is twisted right. And so these taste very different. And that is because the receptors in your tongue actually have a certain chirality because life has this chirality, has a, has a particular chirality. Now it gets actually more interesting, I don't know, cooking is very interesting and flavors are interesting, but it gets more interesting when you think about drugs. So for example, there's a drug that many people have taken called ibuprofen or Motrin. And this drug comes in two chiralities, okay? And one of those chiralities, that molecule that makes up that drug, comes in two chiralities. One of these chiralities actually relieves pain. The other one does not. And so when you buy a, a 100 milligram tablet of ibuprofen, half of the molecules in there are not the drug you're looking for. It, it's along for the ride, so to speak. Now, ibuprofen is a very old drug, and we're allowed to sell that, people are allowed to sell that drug in this form, this very impure form. But all new drugs are, uh, are specified with a particular chirality. That means when you sell the drug, that you must have only one handedness. And that's because that handedness of that molecule will fit into another molecule in your body in one particular way and have one effect. And the other handedness will not. So one example of this is albuterol. Albuterol is a, a drug for asthma, to relieve the symptoms of asthma. One of the handednesses actually helps with getting rid of the symptoms of asthma. The other handedness actually makes it worse. And so you can see it's very important to understand what the chirality of a molecule is. In drugs, in food, um, in analysis of uh, the molecules in your body, um, from your blood or breath, we need to know chirality. Yet, you can imagine if the only difference is the, how the molecules are twisted, it could be a very hard thing to do, and it is. The molecules are twisted, have exactly the same bond lengths, have exactly the same structure, except for just the, the twist uh, direction. 
So what people have been doing is trying to think of ways of detecting the chirality of molecules so that we can test for chirality uh, in the, while drugs are being made. We can test for chirality to see what substances are in your body. And so the project that we've been working on in my lab is to try to come up with a definitive way of measuring chirality in, uh, in a very uh, uh, direct, uh, what we call species specific. That means that we can tell you what the molecule is and we can also tell you the chirality. And the way that we figured out how to do this is the following. And that is, if I can uh, describe uh, the basic idea, is that if we have a molecule and it has a certain chirality, then the dipole moments of that molecule will have a certain orientation. What I mean by that is that if I have a molecule, it often has a dipole moment, a large molecule, it has a dipole moment in three different directions. We'll call it the z direction, the x direction, and the y direction. Now, what is the difference between a left-handed and right-handed molecule? Well, it's this. Here, the dipole moment is in the same direction, the z direction, up. There's also my thumbs, it has the dipole moment in the same direction. But my middle finger, the left-handed molecule and the right-handed molecule, have different directions of those dipole moments. And the dipole moments I'm talking about are just the natural dipole moments that come from the chemical bonding in the atoms in the molecule. And so the question is, how can we detect the fact that one molecule has a dipole moment pointing one way, the other molecule has a dipole, mo dipole moment pointing the other way? Everything else about the molecule is the same between these two molecules. And here is the answer. If we apply an electric field, to this molecule, let's take this version of the molecule, then I can excite this dipole moment with radiation and excite this dipole moment with radiation, and now they're wiggling. But because if you, if you excite a molecule along two axes, you necessarily turn the third axis. When I excite this, this, this dipole and this dipole, that means I excite this dipole, okay? Now, the, it's true that if I do it with the other molecule, that they're all exciting, like this. But you'll see that this molecule here, on my right hand, is exciting an electric field pointing that way. This molecule is exciting an electric field pointing that way. And we can, in fact, very clearly detect the difference. When this is going positive, this molecule is going negative. And so we can look at the molecules um, and look at this particular signal and very clearly distinguish the, uh, the chirality, whether one is left, which, whether the molecule is left-handed or right-handed. Now the future of this field is in fact being able to do this, let's say in real time with very high sensitivity. That means that, for example, if I go to a doctor's office, I might be able to breathe in to, the, uh, to a machine and that machine can then detect not only what kind of molecules come out of, out, of, out of your breath, but also their chirality. And this is actually very important. Right now, we don't have this capability. If we did have this capability, what we could do is t take, we'll call it a medical fingerprint of your breath. And it turns out, it's very well known, that uh, certain diseases give you a certain different medical fingerprint long before they can be diagnosed in other ways. So for example, when cancer first starts, you can, there is actually differences in the molecule spectrum in the breath that are very hard to detect. And so we hope to develop this method that we just talked about to not only detect uh, this wide spectrum of molecules, but also their chirality. So one of the questions that remains unsolved in this field is the following. The, we have a way of detecting the chirality of the, two, of the, the molecules at hand, but there's predictions that due to uh, parity violating effects at the most fundamental level, that the energy of a left-handed molecule will be slightly different than the energy of the right-handed molecule. And that's because there's actually a chirality deep down in the particle physics in nature. And so we don't know if using our method, we'll be able to look and actually see this small energy difference. And it's thought by some, not by me, but it's thought by some, that this small energy difference might have led to the homochirality of life.